Hello, good evening everyone, and welcome back to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Now, I did a little bit of research on this game. Apparently, this game is not a continuation from another game. As I thought it was. So disappointing. Because the title can be very misleading. Uh, and there is no second one. Now, considering the way this one ends, I'm not going to tell you how it ends because that would, you guys will find out. Uh, but it's just, it, the way it ends, it's, it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So it makes you think that they're going to make a second one. Or, I, I have a theory that when they made this one, they had plans to make a second one. They just never went through with it. And apparently, according to the research I, uh, I found out, they, uh, decided not to go through with it. Hey, leave us on a cliffhanger. That's nice. And apparently, Metal Girl Rising is a, uh, has nothing to do with the Metal Girl Saga itself. Apparently, it's its own spinoff. That's not a real person, by the way. That's just some weird robot. Hello, boys. Why don't you come over here? Where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> the guy poses at Sergeant, the end there. Come down, I contacted you from the top floor. Time to make your way up there. Now, as you can see, there's uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, gear here, which you can pick it up. But the reason why there's so much uh, stuff is because we're about to get into a fight.
And don't forget this computer here. Now you can use this tur these turrets right here to help you out. The elevators appear to be disabled, which we should have expected, I suppose. I will access the control unit. Perhaps you can hack an elevator and make it operational. Ooh, splendid idea. By all means, yes. Huh? It seems the guards are storming the building. Guys, get back to the engine. Find some time to get this elevator operational. You can control this UGD as well, yes? Give them hell. The thing that sucks is it takes a while, it takes a few minutes for the turret to actually start firing. It was nice enough for these guys not to interrupt me when I was shooting their friends.
security purposes, the building is divided into upper and lower halves. The lower area consists of offices and meeting space for staff and visitors, while confidential military projects and technical research are restricted to the upper levels. So that's where the brains and the server room will be, up top. Indeed. But that elevator can only access the lower floors. You need to get to the 20th floor and pass the security gate there to reach the upper area. Let me guess. Time to find another left hand? Well, that is the problem. Security cyborgs will not have sufficient clearance. But managers and senior staff have already been evacuated, no doubt. So... The only option is to cut the power to the security gate, which will not be easy. It is powered by no less than three systems, including a backup power supply. You will need to destroy all of the electrical control panels to disable them. In any case, you should arrive at the 20th floor soon. Hmm. The electrical panels are most likely hidden in the walls. Use your enhanced AR to search for any unusual heat sources inside the wall sphere. You went in the soda. <laughs> hey, he's a cyborg, not a full on robot, okay? He still gets that sick. Security gate. It is composed of steel alloy bonded by a high frequency electrical current. It should unlock once the power has been cut. That again. Oh, we're just tearing you apart, and yet somehow you survive. Must be lucky. You're just getting torn to shreds, and yet you're still moving around. Use your enhanced AR to locate it. 
That's right here. I did uh, destroy their uh, system, so yeah, they're, they're not flying, Mary. Join that box is kind of like setting up a flare. How are we coming for that? Well, apparently someone still knows I'm here, but I don't see anyone. Oh, it's a little tiny robot. Little robot. Uh, blade mode one. Man, it's amazing how this horde could slice pretty much through anything. I don't see the use of picking up those boxes. I don't actually use them. Is a number I show you. Oh, behind there. Yeah, that should take care of security. Now, head back to the gate. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, it was a big mama. Hello, big mama. What's up? Ow! 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 Again. <laughs> uh, yeah, regular mode ain't got cut it for those big mamas. He knows the code to that door. Okay, I understand where you're getting that, but you didn't have to be snappy with the doctor, okay? Happy Boris. They're all dead. No mercy. Just like you wanted. Right. So much for all that shit I said I believed in. I read that only one in 50 soldiers can kill with zero hesitation. Guess I'm a two percenter, huh? <laughs> I know what they went through, yeah. 
But I sure as hell didn't let it stop me. No. I guess not. Regular guys. They couldn't handle it. All the blood and body parts. The fear and dying eyes. Me, though. I like it. A lot. No hesitation. No regrets. Maybe it's in my blood. Maybe it's the Sears program. Probably both. The younger you learn a thing, the better you retain it, you know? I remember Liberia like it was yesterday. All the abuse. The threats at gunpoint. Next thing I know, I'm getting off on cutting guys to shreds. Right. But afterwards, afterwards it was tough. Especially once I got to the U.S. I got counseling and education. But every time I talked with someone normal, I felt like all the killing I'd done was gonna crush me. And it didn't stop. Not in my dreams, anyway. I'd hear voices at night, calling out all my crimes. But I couldn't shut them out. The rest of my crew adapted to American life well enough. But I, I never could. Mm. And it returns only now. Raiden, I'm sorry about earlier. I was too hard on you. Nah, I'd be dead without you. I'd still be in Liberia, surrounded by crazy. I've always known you have a dark part in your mind. Perhaps I should not have hired you at all. Perhaps you should not be near Battlefield. The hell with that. If I hadn't signed up, I wouldn't be here to help put an end to this. I gotta do what I can to stop that VR training. I'm not the only one suffering. I need to do this for my old friends. The boys back in Liberia who didn't survive. I survived all the killing, thrived on it. But the experience destroyed them. Duh. Sorry, I better get moving. What do you think about what Monsoon said earlier about me? You think we're all doomed to follow some coded-in routine? That there's no free will? Well, you're always gonna have restraints based on what culture you're born into. The concept of memes was first proposed by Richard Dawkins in a book called The Selfish Gene. Dawkins, a biologist, stated that even if the actions of a living thing appear to be altruistic, each of its genes is still engaging in selfish behavior, purely as a matter of survival. Yeah, I heard about that. He went on to define memes as a different kind of self-replicating unit. They're the genes of a culture, from fashion to chord progressions in music, even political expression. And just like normal genes, they replicate. They grow, infecting more and more people. You buy a shirt you like and put it on. Other people see you wearing it, then buy it for themselves. Yeah, the genes of a culture makes it all sound pretty lofty. But the way Dawkins puts it, Memes can also transmit worthless things, even the bad parts of a culture. Fashion's one thing, but value-related memes can put huge restraints on people's lives. For example, the idea that having lots of money is the ultimate goal, the thing we should all strive for. <laughs> like in the U.S. Any capitalist country, really. But anyway, you catch this money worship meme, then not only are you trying to get rich, you're also spreading that idea to other people. You have to. If that meme isn't the cultural norm, then what are you working for? So you start spreading the word about how important it is to succeed, earn status. Right. And the really contagious memes can be even worse. For example, revenge. A guy sees his countrymen killed by terrorism, so he becomes a terrorist and retaliates. It's an infinite loop. I think it's the same thing with child soldiers. Kids' parents are killed by other kids. So they join the war next and start killing other people's parents. There's gotta be a way to break the cycle, though. Dawkins wrote about that, too. How we can rebel against our genes and memes. Once you're aware of your own memes, you can train yourself to identify and replicate the good ones. And kill the bad ones. Right. Well, that starts with me stopping this VR shit. The Sears program's one hell of a bad meme machine. Uh, yeah? You caught all that. Guess I was Jack the Ripper all along. All that talk about justice. And here I am. Just another killer. Ryan. Listen, I want you off this mission. You don't have to go through this. Kev or Doc can handle saving for me. Ryan, I, I won't... It's my responsibility to stop them before they make another Jack. It's my duty. 
No one else's. That's the way it is. Live by the battlefield, die by the battlefield. Ryden, listen. Courtney, this isn't the place for you. Keep working with me, and you're gonna wind up someplace dark. Uh, I'm fine with that. What? They... they're kidnapping kids. They're ripping their bodies, tearing up their souls to make soldiers. I feel like they have to pay for this. If I just quit here, how would I live with myself? Courtney. I mean, maybe I'd be happier going back to school, getting my MBA, making six figures. But now I know. I've seen the truth. And I can't just forget it. Maybe I can't do what you can, but come on. At least I can handle your data. I... So do you want to save or not? All right, we're set. You're sure about this? Positive. Look, you know you aren't Jack the Ripper. I... I mean, sure, you don't exactly hate every minute of your job out there, but the Raiden I'm talking to right now, he's the same one I've always known. The one who put his life on the line to protect the innocent. Not just some maniac with a knife. <sighs> who knows? Maybe I'm just out for revenge against everyone who made me this way. It's more than that, Raiden. That much I know. <laughs> In any case, I'm going to stop this VR training. All right. Good luck, Raiden. How's it going with the brain units, Doc? Any problems? Oh, they could not be better. They're being kept at exactly 36 degrees Celsius with a steady, uninterrupted supply of oxygen and glucose. Synchronizing them with our equipment posed some difficulty, but everything's perfectly stable now. That's good to hear. What kind of VR are they getting? I prepared very comfortable rooms for each and every one. It's not quite Schloss Neuschwanstein, but each one enjoys the equivalent of a four-star hotel suite. Every room includes an attached pool and an extensive library of on-demand video programming. Three meals are delivered daily, and while we're only able to do so much vis-a-vis -vis taste sensation, it should satisfy the psychological need for food, at least. Doesn't sound too bad. I wouldn't mind a little VR training like that for a change. Oh, be my guest. I'd like to experience it for myself, you know. But for now, it is available to cyborgs only. Exciting work has been done in the realm of invasive brain-machine interfaces. But there simply isn't much demand for it at the moment. I guess not too many folks are willing to stick electrodes in their brains just for a taste of VR. Uh, perhaps, but the sense of reality has considerably improved over nanomachine-based non-invasive methods. If prices were kept low enough, I imagine the video game industry at least would clamor for it. Who coded the virtual hotel? An assistant. He used to write VR programs for UGs, but now specializes in cyborg software. A bit of a niche right now, yes, but when brain-machine interfaces take off, it will be a big business. The children's accommodation is a reworked version of the original beta software he built. The room's 3D models are all made using free libraries. It couldn't have been easier. <laughs> I wish everyone loved their work as much as you do, Doc. They don't go stir-crazy, though, cooped up in their rooms? There's little I can do about that. Creating an open world would take orders of magnitude more resources. What about communication? Another weak spot, yes. The NPCs available to us are all for military training purposes. It will be some time until we see VR characters capable of convincing the human interaction. Sadly, we're also not yet able to connect multiple brains to a single VR space. My assistants are operating virtual agents to give them a bare minimum of mental care. But our team is limited in size. And none of us are medical professionals, you know. They can't stay in there forever. So, you were under Miss Trow's command all this time? I originally took orders from Sundowner, but not for long. As a novelty, I did not last. Miss Trow saw more potential in me. What'd she see? Unknown. However, she apparently enjoys the company of dogs. She demanded 100% obedience. As long as it was given, she treated me well. She was looking for companionship? That I cannot say. I still have relatively little communication experience with humans. My ability to read emotions not explicitly expressed by speech 
is lacking. Okay, Wolf. 